Hello everybody and welcome back to this second episode of the Imperial Japanese Tech Tree. Um, in this episode we'll be dealing with the Na Imperial Japanese Navy Forces. Last episode we dealt with the Japanese Army Air Forces. Um, so Japanese Navy Forces, carrier fighters, your dive bombers, um, long range bombers, float planes, all that sort of stuff that sort of served under the Imperial Japanese Navy during the war. You might recognise some of this stuff from other games like Battle Station Pacific or Midway. Um, and with well, all the introductions done, uh, let's get started. Now moving on to the carrier fighters, we've got the A5M2. Um, we've already got the A5M4 as one, I think it's the first carrier aircraft you can get in War Thunder for the Japanese. Um, only armed with two 7.7mm machine guns if I remember correctly. Uh, quite, quite slow, 273 miles an hour. I can't really see much difference between the A5M2 and the A5M2. A5M4. Uh, other than the fact it has a slightly different engine, probably a weaker one, and doesn't have an enclosed cockpit. I can't remember if the A5M4 in game actually has an enclosed cockpit. Um, I thought it didn't, but apparently it was meant to in real life. So it'd be good for her lower tiers again. So far, it seems with fighters they're sort of focusing on the lower tiers, that, um, especially with the Ki-27. So it'd be good for the lower tiers, but. Again, not particularly massively interested in this aircraft, but again, many aircraft is better than nothing for Japan. They've already got quite, they haven't got that many planes as it is, so more, more, more planes than Miria right at the moment. Now, the next plane on the list is the A6M5H. Now, I believe this is based on the, um, this is the variant of the A6M5 Otsu. It was different in that it had, apparently had, um, was it three three thirteen millimeter machine guns? Uh, sorry, thirteen point two millimeter machine guns. One in each wing and one in the fuselage, and the twin twenty millimeter cannons. Um, and could carry a two hundred fifty kilogram bomb. So again, just seems like they're sort of padding out the A six M line a little bit with a few extra variants. Um, don't think they're going to be able to really get any more meaningful variants in for the A six M. I mean, they've already got about one, two, three. Oh no, um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've only got eight variants if you include the hay. Um I think I think the most we've had before is um probably with the year twos or the sparifarios and I think they ended up being cut down. So um yeah, I think this would probably make the A6M line probably one of the longest like same variant lines in the game. But um yeah, it'd be nice to have it for the Japanese, especially the thirteen millimeters, um because they, they're 7.7mm machine guns, don't really do any damage as it is, so yeah, it would be a decent upgrade in weaponry. Um, it would be good for the Japanese, it, I suppose, and yeah, it would probably be a, after the A6M5 Watsu, so it will have to face higher tier enemies, but um, I hope it's not over tiered, but it, it will help the Japanese in any case, I think, right? Sort of fill, fill out the um, higher tiers, I suppose, right? But let's move on to the next aircraft. Now, this next aircraft is a bit fi harder to find out about. The A6M7. I was well, while while looking online, it was apparently found based on the A6M6 and was using a Kamikaze role. But obviously, we don't really have Kamikaze planes in the game, so I did a bit more digging. Apparently, it was, and I think it was basically a fighter. Um, according to my book, it was a fighter fighter bomber. Um, plane. It was um, based on the A6M6, which was uh, which, which was similar to the um, A6M5. Hey, which so three 13.2 millimeter machine guns, two 20 millimeter cannons. I'm guessing. I, like I said, I couldn't find out too much information about it. I'm assuming it's got a similar speed. Not entirely sure how this variant's gonna add into the game. Um, that's gonna, like I said, there's a lot of A6Ms here. But so again. It, Seems like it's just sort of a copy paste of the A6M5, but maybe I've got it wrong. Like I said, I couldn't find too much information about it. It probably does have some um, different qualities to it, but so yeah, it'll be good for the Japanese. Um, so so far, the only carrier fighters are just A6Ms. We've got the. We'll move on to the other aircraft in a second. Now this next um, bomber or carrier torpedo bomber, the B6N2, is actually a bit unusual in that. Despite being a carrier torpedo bomber, it was actually used mainly from land bases. It needed it needed a very long runway, and well, most of the Japanese carrier it was introduced in mid 1944, and most of the Japanese carriers were sunk by now. As and 
most of them didn't actually have a catapult to launch the B6N2. So it was mainly used as a land based torpedo bomber. Now the armament seems a bit unusual. It had a um what 7.7mm machine gun in the rear cockpit, like the B5N2, but it also had a 7.7mm machine gun firing rearwards and downwards in the fuselage. Now I'm not entirely sure how that's meant to work. Um that gives the impression that it's sort of like the Schage music, oh, I've probably mispronounced it, that the um German fighters and one of the Japanese KI-45 uses, except instead of firing forward and up, it sort of fires down and backwards, which doesn't really make sense, because deep, being a torpedo bomber, it's going to be quite low down anyway, so it's not going to have much chance to use this. I'm guessing it would be like the PE, I think it's the PE-3, they have a machine gun like that, sort of in the tower, that um, it does fire occasionally, but it has to be really specific uh, occasions, so I'm not going to, I doubt this is going to be of much use, if it's even included. Now it could carry 800 kilograms worth of, um, well, as a payload, one torpedo, three 250 kilogram bombs. Could go about 468 kilometers an hour, which is, um, about 290 miles an hour, I believe. Um, I could be wrong there. Um, so, quite a slow fighter, um, well, camp torpedo bomber, I suppose it doesn't need to be too fast. Um, doesn't seem too much different to the B5N2. Um, I'm wondering if it will have trouble taking off. Because this, um, my book does say it needed um, that Japanese carriers um, with catapults weren't available, which would imply that it needed catapults. But I haven't really um, looked into it too deeply. Um, so yeah, I hope it will be able to take off. I'm sure it, I'm glad they'd put it in if it couldn't take off. Although if it couldn't, I suppose they could be using its traditional land-based role. Um, so again, it'd be good for the Japanese, an extra torpedo bomber. But again, not a massive addition. Nothing. Not a uh, not going to exactly change the way the whole game plays, I suppose. But yeah, any extra bombers and torpedo bombs for Japan is welcomed. Moving on to the carrier dive bombers, we've got the D3A2 Model 22. Now, apparently, the um, we've got the D3A1 Model 11 in the game, and apparently, um, well, from what I can understand, the D there was a D3A well, there was a Model 12. I don't know if it was a D3A1 or D3A2, with um improved engines. But this reduced the range, which so we needed um so there was extra fuel tanks installed, which resulted in the D3A2 Model 22. So so from what I can understand, from what I can understand, the D3A2 Model 22 has the exact same armament, same bomb load, but can go slightly faster. So basically, an improved version of the D3A1 Model 11. So again, it would help Japan maybe, in, but the speed added, I think it was only about 10, 20 miles an hour. It's not exactly going to save it unless it's like, like save it from Allied fighters. If it's, in a, if it's in the same tier as the D3A1 Model 11, it might help save it, but not really. No, it seems like it's just sort of padding out the Japanese line again with the sort, same sort of aircraft. So yeah, welcome addition, but not particularly looking forward to it. Now the next aircraft on the carrier dive bombers is the D4Y Judy um, branch. Now the I had a bit of difficulty with this, um, my books only really dealt with the D4Y2, or one of them did. And I have got some information on D4Y3, but uh, for the 1 and 4 I had to go look on the internet for a bit of um, information. Now the D4Y1 was introduced in, it, I think, very late 1943, so the tide had sort of turned against Japan by now. Um, it had two 7.7mm machine guns in the nose, one 7.7mm machine gun in the rear, and um, could carry about 560 kilograms of bombs. Now, I'm basing this on the D4Y2, which had um, had a slightly upgraded engine. I don't think it had any other upgrades to it. So, it could go about, um, where's the speed? For the D4Y3 is listed about 357 miles an hour. I'm assuming the D4Y1 would be a bit slower than that. Uh, the d 45 Y3 was slightly upgraded in that it had a 13 mm machine gun in the load, in the the load, um, the rear cockpit. So a uh, bit of an improvement over the D4Y1. Now the D4Y4 is a bit of an um, bit unusual because um, it was actually designed as a kamikaze aircraft apparently, but it was um, it had rocket assisted takeoff and it could carry one 800 kilogram bomb and it had one crewman. 
Now I'm guessing for game purposes it will probably have um it may not have the rear gunner, but I'm guessing it will be used as a dive bomber rather than a um kamikaze aircraft for um obvious reasons, um political and whatnot. Um so, um so um T four Y ones uh kind of looking forward to them. Japanese do um this is, Japanese do need some more dive bombers. Uh, this is also the only Japanese carrier born aircraft to have an inline engine apparently. So um yeah I'm hoping it will um do quite quite well for the Japanese in the higher tiers. For the next plane on the list we've got the H eight K two. Um we'll go to land based fighters in a minute, but for this aircraft, the H eight K two We've got a bit of information on it down here on the bottom of the page. Now it was a further development of the H6K and had an effective range of 4,440 um, miles. Um, two H8Ks performed a raid on Pearl Harbor, which involved halfway refueling by submarine was the longest distance to aircraft bombing mission ever. Now it could fly 290 miles an hour, um, which is apparently quite a considerable achievement, you know, considering it's a flying boat, and more importantly, it had it had um, five MGs and five 20 millimeter cannons. Now I'm assuming this is the version that will be put in the game. Um, the version that they're mentioning. I have heard of um, up to six um, machine guns being put in the H8K2, but I'm assuming they'll stick with just this uh, armament. It could carry about 2,000 kilograms in um, payload, so two torpedoes or eight 250 kilogram bombs. So this will be a higher tier aircraft. It won't be seal club in the lower tiers like the H6K used to when the, when the War Thunder first came out. So it's definitely a good improvement and because of its armament it should be able to hold off um, enemies at higher tiers quite easily um, or at least make them pay if they do attack probably shooting down most of the attackers. So I'm definitely looking forward to this aircraft. It'll sort of make a great addition, um, sort of Japanese version of the Sunderland I suppose but with actually um, more powerful armament. Moving on to the next aircraft, we've got the land-based fighters and the J2M series of aircraft known as the Raiden, um, sometimes known as the Raiden, sorry. Now the J2M2 was armed with two 7.7mm machine guns and two 20mm cannons, um, which, you know, quite a decent armament. The J2M3, um, there's two variants of this, the A model and just the J2M variant. Um, now, now there isn't much to there isn't much difference between the two. They both have the same engine, but slightly different um, armament. The J two M three had um, two Type ninety nine Model one cannons, and the J and it had uh, another two Type ninety nine Model two cannons. So Model two Model one cannons, two Model two cannons. Whereas the J two M three A had two Model two cannons. I'm guessing Gaijin would probably go for the a variant just to, I mean, it seems a bit odd that they'd put in the variant with two different cannons. I'm not sure why they had two different cannons in real life. It seems a bit odd, odd and a bit muddled. Um, apparently some of the J2M3 series could sometimes have the two upward firing um, Type 99 cannons. Uh, the Schrag music like on the um, KI-45. Now the speed for the J2M3 that I've got written down is... um from my book is um, 365 miles an hour. I'm not sure about what the um, J2M2 is or the J2M5. Oh, no, we'll deal with the J2M5 now. Now, now the J2M5 also had two variants. One had a supercharger for getting to up to high altitude and just two 20mm cannons. Oh, sorry, it had two 20mm cannons in the fuselage and two 20mm cannons in the wings. While the J2M5 um, A had had just four um model um type ninety nine model two um cannons all in the wings. Um so I'm guessing I don't know what version Gaijin will be going for. The um one with all the cannons in the wings sounds quite powerful, whereas the just the original J two M five sounds like it will be quite um good at getting to a, a big you know, to high height to deal with the bombers, which um would be definitely welcome for the Japanese. They don't really have any aircraft capable of intercepting and shooting down the bombers at the moment. So again, kind of looking forward to these fighters. I don't, I'm guessing they'll be fairly high tier. I'm not entirely sure. Or they'll be maybe lower tier than the M1K2s. I believe they're the only land-based fighters in the game at the moment. So yeah, they'll be a good addition for the Japanese who are sort of lacking with um 
uh, land-based fighters at the moment. Next up is the N1K1J. Now, um, this will be quite easy to deal with, I hope. Uh, this is based on a, a float-equipped fighter, I believe, uh, the N1K1, which is um, uh, where is it? Down here in the float plane line. But um, while they were designing the float plane version, they also designed a version with a uh, wheel landing gear, um, which they designated the M1K1J Shiden or Violet Lightning. Now, um, this was armed armed with um, two 7.7 mm machine guns in the nose and four um, 20 mm cannons in the uh, in the wings, and could reach speeds of up to um, well, its max speed was 363 miles an hour. So, a very fast and well-armed aircraft, um, which is quite unusual for Japan. So, yeah, there's a few different variants of this, but I'm, a, I'm just going to assume they go with the normal M, you know, just the M1K1J. Definitely a welcome addition for the Japanese. This is, I think this is actually one of their best air fighter aircraft in the entire war. It's just that it wasn't built in large numbers, so this will be a massive welcome for the Japanese. Now the next aircraft on our list is the A7M2J. Now I'm not sure what the J stands for. I couldn't find it. I couldn't even find the A7M in my book. M2 in my books. Um, I don't know what the J stands for. I found the A7M2 while online, and I found an A7M3J online. But I'm guessing it may be meant to mean land-based um, version. That's what the one, the A7M3 version I found online was. Now this aircraft was actually quite. Very fast, 390 miles an hour, an hour armed with two 13mm cannons, um, machine guns, and two 20mm cannons. Now, this is meant to be a, a replacement for the Japanese A6M, but because of, um, I think it was an earthquake in American bombing, they only ever produced nine of them. Um, they were tested it in 1944, so yeah, that put them quite a bit behind. Um, it seems like a very fast aircraft. I'm not sure how maneuverable it will be, but this will be quite a welcome addition in the higher tiers hopefully be it allow them to compete against the um allow the Japanese to compete against some of the American higher tier aircraft um so because at the moment they seem so, seem to get like beaten quite badly whenever the um, Americans and Japanese go to go to battle against each other so this will be a welcome addition for the Japanese like with the rest of the land based fighters now for the next aircraft we've got the J seven W one and Helpfully for us, the um, Gaijin have left, lent us a little description of the um, J7W. Now, um, apparently it was a desperate attempt to protect the mainland Japan from B-29 attacks. Um, some of you may recognise this aircraft from Battle Station Pacific. Um, it's, a, it's got the propeller on the back. Um, um, so, already different, quite a lot different to most aircraft. It had four 30mm cannons and high agility, typical for Japanese fighters. It doesn't mention the top speed, though I have looked online and found that, that, that it was apparently able to go about 470 miles an hour, so very fast. The, um, the M1K1 Shiden was considered fast at 363. The um, A7M8, was it, what was it, the A7... The A7M2J was considered fast at 390. This goes 470. So, yeah, and 430mm cannons. This is definitely going to be a high tier aircraft and it is going to be very powerful. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this aircraft. Um, it sort of pushes into paper planes territory a bit, which, um, well, it did fly in the fly. It didn't fly in combat, but it did fly. It does sort of show that they are running out of planes to give Japan at the moment. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this aircraft. The last plane on our list is the JAN-1, also known as the Nakajima Kika. Now this is um, sort of designed on the ME-262, um, but was a bit smaller and had um, less powerful engines. Its max speed was only 433 miles an hour. I believe some of the fighters up here actually go faster than that. Um, and even with its more powerful, even with the um, most powerful engines Japan could produce, with, um, but it still needs rocket-assisted takeoff, which um, actually resulted in one of the prototypes being destroyed, or uh, the or the flight had to be abandoned. I can't remember if it was destroyed now. But um, yeah, 433 miles an hour, one 500 kilogram bomb, or t two 30 millimeter cannons for um, armament. Um, it's it'll be good to give for Japan to have an actual 
um, domestic jet, but it doesn't really come off as sounding that great. So, yeah, I'll be looking forward to it being added to the game. Will I look forward to flying it in combat? Probably not as much, at least compared to the other jets by the other nations. Quickly moving on to the one and only float plane, plane fighter in this list is the M1K1, which was um, what the M1K1J was originally based on. Um, it's a bit like the A6M2N, uh, two 20mm cannons, two 7.7mm um, 7 .7 machine guns. I think it did about 360-370 um, miles an hour, because obviously it had a huge float to lug around. This will definitely make the float offence interesting. Um, um, it'll be, I'm not sure how this is going to quite fit in tiering wise, but this will be quite powerful um, armament wise. Um, outclassed in speed, obviously, but yeah, it'll still come off. I think this will still be a pretty good fighter. Quickly moving on to the one and only high speed bomber added into the game, we've got the R2Y2, which is based on the R2Y1, which went about 480 miles an hour and was unarmed. The high speed um, R2Y2 was slightly different in that it had um, two jet engines rather than the propeller of the R2Y1. I'm guessing it was to be armed because it's a high speed bomber, so at least with bombs, um, I don't know what kind of defensive armament, if any, it would have. Um, I actually don't know much about this aircraft at all, I couldn't really find any specs about it. Um, yeah, I can't really comment too much about it, it'll probably be a higher tier aircraft because it has jets. And it'll probably be faster despite having bombs because again jets although based on the J8N1 these may not be that powerful so it could be a bit slow I suppose but yeah I can't really comment on this aircraft too much quickly moving on to the last um, list on the tech tree long range bombers we've got the G3M2 now some of you may recognize this from battle stations Midway or Pacific this is a um, long range bomber used by the Japanese Navy um, I think it was retired in 1942. Now it had um, it was only about 233 miles an hour max speed. So this was a very slow aircraft, and its defensive armament it, it was okay-ish. It had um one 20 mm 20 millimeter cannon in the a rear dorsal turret, a retractable um forward uh, um dorsal turret with a 7.7 millimeter machine gun, so two 7.7 millimeter machine guns in the sides and one in the cockpit. So, four machine guns, one cannon, and could carry about 800 kilograms worth of bombs, or as usual, a torpedo. Now, I don't know where this is going to go tiering wise, it isn't that great, it's ridiculously slow, armament is okay ish, I suppose. No ventral um, defensive armament, so it'll be quite vulnerable there. Uh, definitely a low tier bomber, but where, where exactly it will come and how it will do in the game, I can't really comment too much. Now the next aircraft on our list are the G4M2 and the G4M3, uh, improved versions of the G4M1 bomber already in game. The G4M2 had slightly more powerful engines, giving it a marginal speed increase and um, modifications to the wings and fuselage, giving it a slightly improved service ceiling. Um, other major changes is it, um, it could carry more bombs, up to a thousand kilograms worth of bombs. I believe the one in game only carries something like 800 kilograms due to it being ultra light, long range bomber, and all that. Um, no self sealing tanks are still quite weak. Armament it has an extra 20 millimeter turret in the dorsal turret. Uh, got the side machine guns, the nose machine gunner. Also, one in the cockpit side, apparently. Um, don't know if that's probably going to work more, a bit like the Dornier A217E2. Um, I assume. Uh, the G4M3, not much. it was a more improvement in survivability, um, armour, self-sealing tanks. I believe there was 20mm cannon added into the side um, gunners in some cases, and two machine guns in the fr in the nose rather than the one. So, yeah, okay variants I suppose. G4M2 will probably make a bit of a difference. G4M3, assuming it has the same bomb load, it'll probably be higher tier. Its survivability will only be about what most lower tier bombers are, I'm guessing. You know, they seem to come with decent armour and self-sealing tanks as standard. So, 
guessing it won't be that major much of an improvement for the G4M3 Arm armament wise, well bomb load wise, the G4M2 seems to be more of an improvement now the last plane on our list is the P1Y1 a plane I'd only ever heard about from Hearts of Iron 2 and Hearts of Iron 3, I thought one of the two and I'd always assumed it was a bit of a paper plane but it was an operational bomber as it turns out um, it could go about 340 miles an hour and was armed with um, one nose mounted 20mm cannon and one rear facing 13mm cannon could carry up to 1000 kilograms worth of bombs or or uh, like with most Japanese bombers the one torpedo um, seems like it's taken a bit of a different design philosophy getting rid of the defensive armament uh, taking a German approach of putting the 20 mm cannon on the front doesn't seem that special if I'm honest. Um, seems kind of fast, but I'm not sure if it will be able to outrun fighters. Kind of uh, sort of looking forward to this plane, but not massively. Doesn't seem like it'll have that much of an impact if I'm honest. So now that we've gone through all the planes, which ones am I looking forward to the most? Probably the land-based fighters, the JAN1. Even if it's not as high, uh, even if it's not really going to be as good as like the ME262. The J7W1, just because it's so unusual. Uh, the H8K2, because, well, flying boats with lots of lots of guns on it. Um, probably one that some of the bombers as well. And maybe some of these KI-61s, KI-44s. Um, def definitely some bombers and fighters on here that sort of seem like they'll be good to use or a bit unusual. Um, I will be trying to do the German and American tech trees. Um, been taking a bit of a long time. I'm starting to split these into two halves now. Um, I'd actually recorded this all as one whole thing, but it was just lasting like an hour of recording. No one's going to watch an hour of me waffling on about planes. Um, so I'm going to try and make some changes to show the aircraft themselves some more as well. Um, has been more of a lecture, I suppose. Um, reading all of this out um you know and people have sort of given feedback about how to improve this so i will try and take on people's ideas uh thank you for watching leave a like if you like the video subscribe if you like these sort of videos um leave feedback definitely do with feedback if you find any information that i haven't added or if i've got any information wrong please leave it below i'll try to correct it and well thank you for watching